Hello, everybody, and welcome to the quarterfinals of Grand Prix Washington, D.C. We are about to watch Wing Chun Yam play against William Jensen. William Jensen, the Hall of Famer. Wing Chun Yam, the king of the hill. That's right. And uh, <coughs> oh, look at this. This is, this is nice. This yeah, is a, a couple a of one drops fighting each other with heroic. And uh, I'm curious to see what, what Wing's uh, second color is, because I think it might be the same as, it yeah, is. We, we got a mirror match. We got here. some borrow speed downs going on. We do, and uh, I can tell you that Huey Jensen has some serious trump cards for this matchup. Uh, hopefully, we'll see him. The way he described his deck to me was 20 really good cards and three kind of stinkers. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, some some great heroic cards on the table right Jeez, now. Jeez, no kidding! Every card on the table has heroic. It's like a BDM board state. <laughs> oh, I love it. I mean, usually they're all on my side of the <laughs> <Sure>. table, but. <laughs> So Crone Skygar joins the team, along with a uh, favorite hoplite from uh, from Huey here. And, and now he's thinking about his second turn play. He's he's thinking uh, he's taking his time here. Puts down a mountain. Okay, just says I'm magma spraying that. You'll note here that Huey decided to do it during his turn. That's to play around any potential yeah. pump spells he, that would he, get it out of range. And he doesn't. He doesn't attack. Interesting. No, no, no block, so, no so attack. He's representing God's Welling here. Yes. A Johnny's presence is oh, another Johnny's card presence, he can have. Absolutely. And he's just like, you're not going to attack. You you know what's going on. You are not going to attack into me. Interestingly here, Flame Speakers will. Yeah. Not a great magic card, but it does get the job done if your goal is to right. simply target your creature. And to bash in with a 3-3. Three, three. And now it's interesting because Wing has sort of one-upped the, yes. the, <laughs> the what do you have game because now even if Huey has one of those cards, right, he can have he doesn't kill the Seder Hoplite. A, a, oh, but we're getting a block. So Huey says, I call and I've got Mortal's Ardor. Mor wow. It was the third option. Yeah, now this is a, a risky play, as Wing could have some type of removal spell to He's respond. Like, does the counter go on? Well, then it doesn't matter. Then it doesn't matter, because now, of course, the Hoplite is going to have all damage that would be dealt to it prevented. So even if, if, if Wing wants to go for, uh, you know, a combat trick, it's just going to be saving his Hoplite here. And that's what and he's going to yeah, do. Absolutely. Yep. That's interesting. Uh, you know, it, it's risky, right? I mean, Huey calls, and what can happen is he can get lightning struck here. He can get... Uh, Fall of the Hammered. Fall of the Hammered. He can get Magma Jetted. He can get Magma Sprayed. Like, there's a, quite a few cards there that Wing can have that get it, get, gets him. But uh, he didn't have one, and, and Huey now has a 2-3. That's going to do I good blocking some, duty. I see a godly card in... You sure do. In, in, in uh, Jensen's hand. It is divine, my friend. Oh, wow. And but in the correct. meanwhile, in the meantime, he's got a 4-4 he has to deal with here. It's uh, two plus one, plus one counters, and a plus one, plus one from the uh, flame speaker as well. And then Eagle of the Watch. One card. Ever vigilant. Yeah, I see maybe a couple of... Uh, and then just on one of the, the, the right, you know, north of 20 cards. Right. <laughs> yes, the, the 20 to 24. This is going to be interesting, too. You, is you'll this note, a 16 lander for Huey? I don't think so. I think okay. it's 17, but I'm not sure. Uh, I didn't look at the at the deck sheet. I just uh, thumbed through the, the, the actual deck in my hand. But Huey, you're going to see him going to the tank quite a bit here. Uh, this is the type of match that is not going to let him have really any mistakes. Right. So Bolt of Karanos takes out the flyer. Oh, I see what you're saying. Does still have a land drop coming as well here. But he's behind, and he's oh, going to yeah. need to find a way to deal with this 4-4 hop he, he, ga he gained some life off of that uh, Mortal's Ardor there. Correct, he did. That's a good point. He's still at 18. Mm -hmm. Speaking of gaining some life, Laguna Band Elder. It's a nice one. Helps race in all categories, gains him some life, puts a three-power creature a, out it's there. A, it's, yeah, it's a 3-2 yeah. for three. It's it's perfectly reasonable. That looked like a Stormcaller of Karanos. That's exactly what it was. And I, I think in this deck, that's probably in that 20 to 24 category as sure. well. It's not going to have any way to activate it that I know of.
So scary to block that guy. I never blocked one, I don't think, ever. Yeah. Even I don't block that creature. Any trick at all. Right. So Huey plays a Stormcaller of Karanos post-combat. He's not going to be attacking with it, so it's going to sit there and try to prevent the Laganaban Elder from attacking. Yeah. He'd like to trade there and, you know, reserve the right to figure out, by as many turns as possible, to Ooh. figure out, oh, wow. Yeah, now Harvest Guard, Harvest I'll say. Guard, I'll say it. It. Yeah, yeah, it's going to put a, so, put a pinch in that so plan. No, so he returns the favor, no damage. Prevent the damage that would be dealt to the Elder. Can't really block it at all. Right. And this is interesting. So Huey has Eroas in his hand, and it just doesn't do anything here. Right. It's not active, and attacking is just not the name of the game right now for Huey as he's way behind on the life total race. But thankfully, it's Stone Shock Giant. I like that. It's a much better blocker here. Do, doing a pip count. We're at four. Yep, so with with Eroas, he'll be one away. And now that is a great blocker. But but time is is slipping away for him. Oh, absolutely. Like, Wing is, you know, one trick or removal spell away from yeah. delivering some savage beats well, I think, here. I think any any attacks he makes here, uh, Jensen has to block. Oh. Interesting. One card. So. so he gets a trigger from the Harvest Guard Alsaids from his Aegis there. And he's going to target the, the Hoplite. And yep. he's going to get in there for four. And now Huey has to decide what he wants to do. He can chump block with his Storm Collar. He can go to three. Or he can go to three. It's risky business. Yep. I mean, he's got to assume that Wing doesn't have yep. a burn spell in his hand, but still. That's what gets, he does. down close. Yep. So down to three he goes. He draws a sixth land. Which he actually kind of needed here. He's got a six drop in his hand, and it does block. So I think he kind of wants to get that on the battlefield here. Ages of the Gods, though, is a 2-1 as well. It's not quite lethal on its own. This is going to be really close. It's not going to take much for Wing to break through here, but uh, Huey may have stabilized. I think he's got the 5-4 there, too, the really mad haste-giving giant that I can't remember the name of. What is that? Endless, oh. is it Cyclops of Endless Fury? Yes. I think that's what it's called, right? It's a 5-3? Yes, it is. Yeah. Eternal Fury. Eternal Fury. So. <laughs> So all of Huey's uh, creatures have haste now. Yeah. And Huey, <laughs> Huey has like, oh. stabilized here, sort of. But it doesn't take much. Ooh. Uh, yeah, so Wing can cast that. He's got a land, and he just drew the uh, supply, line cranes. supply line cranes. But it is not an artifact, so he doesn't get a that Harvest Guard. I'll say it's trigger here. But he makes a lethal 3-5 flyer in the air, and I... There's not a lot here. I mean, Huey's going to need to find. He's got Eros in his hand, but he needs a Divine Verdict or something along those lines to get out of this. He doesn't have anything with Reach. He finds Forgeborn Oriads. Now, there's no way he can get in for 17 here, right? I don't believe so. Y even with Eros. I mean, there's still blocks that. I mean, Eros would have haste. Oh, yeah. That's five or seven more. But unfortunately, I think that Huey would need to play like a two drop that had a. a colored mana symbol on it, in addition to a rose to be able to even facilitate the attack. And then I'm assuming that Wing Chun can well, also no, he's not got, die he's with got six double there. blocks. He'd have eight with a rose. Oh, right. Of course he would. Yeah, so yeah. a rose, it, it does actually have haste here. But even yeah. then, my, my gut tells me, without, you know, sort of the no math here, that he, he actually can't get in for lethal. And then Wing can just attack with his one supply line cranes and, uh, and finish off Huey. But Maybe it's worth a shot. Maybe I think the question for Huey is: Does, you know, he, does want he want show to show him? it to him? I mean, right. I mean, Huey has to figure out if he can actually kill him. I'm assuming that he can't. And if he can't, you know, there's definitely an argument to be made for just not showing him. That's, I think that's what he's thinking of. Yeah. I mean, so you're, you're in the top eight of a GP here. With a rowish creatures you control can't be blocked by, uh, except by two or more creatures. Goblin War Drums effect is what we call that. Yep. Uh, So it looks like Huey's decided just to yeah. uh, to bluff a little here and uh, yeah. As soon as as soon as Wing just pointed to his supply line cranes, yep. 
Jensen started scooping up his cards. All right. So Wings going to win the first game. Let's take a look at our top eight bracket, though. Yeah, there you go. I mean, so it was Jensen and Wing up there. Uh, Christian Calcano and Mike Sigrist. So the winner there is going to play the winner of Jensen uh, Yam. One grizzled East Coast veteran versus a yeah, future yeah. grizzled East Coast veteran. Uh, he's already. He's, he's already, in. Yeah. yeah, Calcano's already grizzled. He's like in his 20s. And yeah, he's fully already grizzled. grizzled. He's right. fully grizzled. <laughs> uh, David Falk, John Alexander. Kind of just quietly doing their thing. Uh, I think it's Alexander John, isn't it? Alexander John, sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, it's not your fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of quietly doing their thing and, uh, you know, waiting to see which one of them is going to win this Grand Prix. So you're calling it. <laughs> upper right bracket is where I mean, our upper champion right, emerges. I, certainly our finalist is going to emerge. I'm just telling you. Okay. I know how this works. So even if Yuya gets by Charles, yes, you're saying yes. he's just going to run right yes, by Yes, yes, yes. Over Yuya. Yeah, that's Very what's going to happen. Play, that's play. how this works. That's how magic works. Can I just take Yuya versus the world? Like, <laughs> I'm fine with that. Uh, you're scared to take Jensen versus the world down a game? No, no, I'll take Jensen, too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that I had that option. All right, we're, we're back here as these players, uh, you know, make some adjustments, do a little tweaking. You know, like, oh, what could I, what could I bring in here? What would be good? You know, anything, uh, anything look to you interesting off of Jensen's sideboard? He clearly has something he wants to bring in. You know, maybe like a spark spray or. What do you think about Great Heart? Dawn to Dusk? Not a lot here. I mean, he really just wants something to disrupt that, that early you know, he might want to just go a little more control -y, right? Yeah, I mean, this sort of begs the eternal magic question of who's the beat down here, right? And when you have two aggressive decks go against each other, one of them has to decide, I'm going to be the one to not right. be the aggressor here. And then he's going to adjust his deck accordingly. Right. I mean, looking at this list, you know, Ben and I were talking earlier about Seder Hoplite, and we, we, we remarked that, you know, neither of us were particularly a big fan of the card. Right. And interesting, Huey's got one in his, in his uh, pile, not even running it. Sure. You know, it's just didn't make the cut. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm seeing just so many, like, deserters quarters. It's just too slow, I'm sure. assuming. Font of Vigor is not what he wants to be no, doing. No, no. Oh, there's he a revoke existence. He might want that. Right. Uh, interestingly, uh, you know, we watched a match before between Brian Brondu and, and uh, Charles League. And League, you know, it was, it was a similar matchup of aggro decks. And League had just a Laguna Band Trailblazer. Hmm. And, you know, that was just like the breaks. Sure. You know, and he was able he was able to just sort of like climb back into a game on that on the back of that. Um, I did notice one card in Huey's sideboard. He's got sands. Scouring sands That's or right. searing sands? Scouring sands. And uh, that could be interesting. Um, you know, we didn't get to see a ton from Wing, but we did see a Seder hoplite. Right. Huey is on the play here. Right. And you're pretty happy if you just get a creature with that. Oh, absolutely. Thing. One for one. I mean, I said spark spray, right? Like you'd bring in spark spray mm -hmm. to get something. Yeah. And, and you know, we also saw a, uh, an eagle of the watch. Oh, yeah. You know, that would kill that, too. So I wouldn't be surprised if Huey brought that card in. I've, I've had my two loyal Pegasi Ooh. gotten. Scoured. Scoured. That's pretty brutal, man. You feel pretty good on turn two. And you get to scry. <laughs> Cards each. Okay. See land and spells for William Jensen. Does he have a planes? Yes, he does. Engage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, engage indeed. Yeah, Soldier of the Pantheon is his lead, and uh, he's got he's got a combat trick to back that up. Should he need it? Oh, a Crone Crusader. Wing is just the aggroist yeah. here. He's got all the one drops. All right, he, he, as far as Warden, it looks like that it's might be the card that, that mm -hmm. might be the card that came in. Go. Wow. Spirit of the Labyrinth. Neither red white deck can draw more cards. Marshall shakes his head as the Rashad peers Kilroy like over his monitor I'll, to taunt him. He'll never let me forget <laughs> that. I'll also never let him forget it, though. It's kind of a mutual. Yeah, mutually assured uh, 
destruction there? Yeah, we're <laughs> we're like the Eros brothers or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta say, I like Huey's start of having five power on turn two <laughs> in limited. <laughs> But I, I will also say that uh, Wings got really one of the perfect foils to it with uh, a Chrome Crusader because he can spew out a couple of uh, one ones here over the sure. course of the next turn or two, and they just trade off for real cards from Huey. Right. So Flames, it's pretty miserable. Flame speak as well, yeah, and he, he's only attacking with the creature that he gets off the heroic trigger from his Chrome Crusader. Oh, look at this. There it is. Wow, just He's got all a 3 in. 3 and another 1 1, and he's just keeping. Hopefully, keeping William Jensen at bay. Yeah, I mean, Wing, Wing, his deck is really all in. I mean, he just went a Chrome Crusader, double Flame Speaker's Will. Like those are fringe playable cards. Right. Like Flame Speaker's Will is kind of bad, <laughs> you know. And a Chrome Crusader is only good in the right deck. And then he looks like he's found one here. It's bad, As but it looks pretty good look here. Look at look at Huey. He just three one toughness creatures. He's got eight yeah. power on the battle. I mean, there's some decks that miss a land drop and they're just dead by now. Yeah. You know, and, and unfortunately for, for Huey, that's just not the case. Hey, well, he a, ran into the mirror here. Yeah. So like we the need box. a scouring sands. That's what we need. Yeah. Now, if you're on Wing Chung's side, though, you know, he's got the shields up, but he's actually not destroying anybody here. No, I mean, he's, he's attacking for one a turn. He can't even do that this turn. So. You know, I like I like where Wings at as far as that, but look at that, he's not even attacking now. It doesn't, so. doesn't have a fourth land. No. And now the Warden's up. This is where Aroas could be huge too. Oh, Aroas would be absolutely filthy here. Yes. Nope. Now let's see what Huey wants to do. He can. Nope. He can't really do much here. Actually, he's gonna he's have probably to pass, gonna pass turn take the turn, and you know wants to use his. Uh, Wing is just the sickest. Look at him squeeze out that card. <laughs> he tapped the top that. of his library. He just did the slow squeeze. He found a mountain. I'm pretty sure he's just digging for planes is, is what he'd like to see. I see he's got a supply line cranes in his hand. Pass the turn. Tap a token. So Huey's got Battlewise Valor, land, and I couldn't quite see what the other card was, BDM. It might be. Does he have a deicide or a reprisal? Oh. In his oh. list. Uh, let me look. He has a deicide. Oh, well, there you go. Deicide, probably not doing a ton here. I mean, he's not going to want to use it to take out just random well, flame speakers. It's a little bit of a well. combat. You know, it gives minus one, minus one to the Acorn Crusader in combat. At instant speed, sure. Yeah. Unfortunately, just none of Huey's creatures can enter combat, even with a 2 2 here and, and survive. Another land off the top for wing. Yeah. But unfortunately, Wrong color. It, it's another mountain, so. All right, now Huey's changed his tone a little oh, bit. He's going to start tapping down the I big think, creature. Is that is that the sands? Is it? It is scouring sands. We talked about it coming into the match or into the round, and he's going to wipe call, away Marshall. the board. Yeah, and uh, I think we're going to see a huge chunk of damage come down here. He's even going to leave the warden up just in case. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the uh, crusader were to get targeted, get, he could tap down the get token in for eight. Eight. Go. Boom. That's a big hit, and that's uh, that's lethal yeah. next turn with a battle with a battle wise valor. Okay, so right, that's you know the heat is on. Yeah, Wing comes, needs to find something. Yeah. Wow. And it, and it kind of has to be a little bigger than a three, mm -hmm. because warden can tap, and then tap whatever you play. Right. Yeah, he essentially has two taps stored up there. A lot of white cards in hand for Wing. But, you know, it's a lot of red mana, so, you know, are you ready to commit? Yeah, he's like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pump anything. I'm fine. I can wait a turn. Yeah, I mean, he's got plenty of creatures here. It would be tempting to go for it, but it's pretty yeah. risky. Look great coming out of the gates with a Crow and Crusader. Make two guys, you know, have a 3-3, but, you know, we went to the sideboard. Yeah. Is the Afar's Warden a, a sideboard card as well? Yeah, it's gotta be. Actually, no. Remember, he did say, you know, 23. Yeah. You know, so let's see if he ended up main decking it. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it it's like, in the main. It looks like he main decked every white card from Theros that he drafted. Including R Ray of Dissolution here, too. So, yeah, he said it. Last breath, not great in a deck like this either. So, oh, 
We got, we've got a result. Yu Yu versus Watanabe. Appeal. Yep, Yu Watanabe has advanced to face the winner of David Falk and Alexander John. <laughs> I mean, I'm just telling you, I know how this is going to go. You called it. I'm not getting in your way this weekend, man. <laughs> I, you were calling out what my opponents were playing while I was playing on Magic Line sitting 10 feet from you. So. Yeah, by the way, if you enjoy watching the likes of William Jensen and Yu Yu Watanabe and Christian Calcano uh, drafting and, and playing Magic, you're going to be able to follow these guys in just really like a few weeks when we go to Portland, Oregon. Uh, I heard some stuff about a draft train leaving from Seattle. Choo-choo. <laughs> uh, P Portland, Oregon, August 1st through 3rd. We're going to have Magic 2015 uh, standard constructed. So this is going to be the biggest that standard gets right. over the course of its year. That's a big deal. Right? Two different core sets. You know, uh, the full Ravnica block and the full Theros block to work with. You know, are we going to see something that's, you know, able to displace pack rats and, uh, you know, mono blue devotion? Not sure. Yeah, there's a lot of cards to choose from and there. Gonna, and, and this is the first time we're going to watch people draft core set at the highest level of competition. Which I'm really excited for because I've particularly enjoyed the last two core sets, especially M13. I loved M13, right. M14. I, I, I drafted a lot. Yeah, Ben Ben was, was talking about how much he loved he, M14. He loves M14, yeah. yeah. And I'm a big fan. I don't have it quite as high as he does. I actually prefer M13. I think it was yeah. excellent. But but I'm excited to see pros drafted. And yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know, that's going to be just unbelievable. That's going to be the first thing we're going to kick off with on, on Friday morning is, you know, a, a, you know, a draft pod chock full of the best names we can find, you know, drafting Magic 2015 on camera. Yep. We have another result. Alexander John has stepped up to bat against Yuya Watanabe. Good luck, Alex. <laughs> That's Yuya Watanabe you're playing right. against. David, your opponent this round will be Goliath. <laughs> <laughs> Who's on the play? You know? <laughs> this is going to be a sweet game three, though. Yeah. A real slugfest in but this don't, mirror. Don't feel intimidated. He only has 20 more Grand Prix top eights than you. <laughs> Unbelievable, Yuya. Yeah just unreal somehow underrated too it's yeah like he doesn't get mentioned as often with two, the two pro tour top eights games. kind of like you know pro, pro tour top eights unfortunately or or fortunately are, are kind of where you you know where the, the 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 most that's the most famous finish you get as a magic player right so all right players are looking at their starting seven I'd like to see some keeps here. Yeah, I always want to see keeps, and, yeah. and, and we are. No one drop. No. no one drop there either. Wonder if Wing has uh, adjusted to the scouring stance potentially. No two drop. What is going on here? Yeah, well, William Jensen's not having any of it. He's like, I've got a two drop. Sure. It's one of the best. It's a good one. A Crow and Skyguard. What? I don't know. Did he keep a creatureless hand? All right. Nope. We're getting in for one with the Sky Guard. And no play from Jensen. They're playing this old school kind of uh, control -y one one permanent at a time. Hmm. This is suspicious. Kragma Butcher. Yeah, on turn four. Now, I'm not saying he couldn't have just drawn it, but he might have also just waited a turn to have white mana up to be able to protect it. Right, one, man, one mana showing. You know, being under no pressure from if you're Wing Chun means that that he had an extra turn there if he wanted to try to leave up something like a God's Willing or a Johnny's Presence to protect his main threat here. Unfortunately for him, the Inspired isn't going to save that thing from the uh, Ifara's Warden. It untaps and the Inspired goes on the stack and then you just tap it again. Exactly. Five mana. This this smells bestowy. Or it could be supply liney. Ah, supply line cranes. Love that one. I have that one a little higher than than, than ben. most people. <laughs> than, well, yeah, than Ben for sure. 
Do you, do you have it above Oresco's Swift Claw? Uh, you know, that's a good question. Probably. Do you have, it's, it, it's do, close. Do you have it above the Fortifier? Yes. Okay. Significantly. Okay. The real question is the Johnny's presence or that one, and that, that one I'm not sure about, but. I like threats, man. He's deciding where to put the token. Yeah, to yeah, counter is on the stack. Gotcha. Generally, you'd probably want to diversify your threats out a little bit here. That's what he does. You can get one extra damage in by putting right. it on there, but makes your supply line cranes a bit worse. And uh, you know, it hasn't seen too many ways to interact with it yet. Skyguard's got a long way to go before it it gets big enough yeah, to tussle with the cranes. Just remind people, you know, with the cap, you know, William, William Jensen just set the record. Eighth Grand Prix top eight of the Congrats year. Congrats to him. Congratulations to him. Breaks the record held by his great friend Owen, Owen Turtenwald. Um, but, you know, he needs a top four finish here in order to advance in his point total for the year because he is over the five Grand Prix cap. So there we see exactly as we talked about. He is well over the five grand grand yeah. cap as well. He left that yeah. behind a few months yeah, ago. Yeah, a top, a top four finish is the only thing that'll get him a point as he creeps up Maybe this on Ben Stark. Maybe this change it to eight. <laughs> eight, eight. Change it to whatever eights. number, the most number of top eights the what year was the previous well, year. Well, no, I was thinking just your eight, to, your top eight, top eights. <laughs> I'm not sure if a clever <laughs> wordplay is a good reason yeah. to change it. There's yeah. probably a little more math uh, that needs to be done. I know Jensen would probably agree with you. Actually, with eight from him, yeah, he would be quite thrilled. Okay, supply line cranes gets in for three. So wing moves a little closer to his goal. He's yeah, ahead on board. Ah. <laughs> ah, again. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, Rave Dissolution takes out the uh, oppressive rays. That's right. That's going to also gain Huey three life there, which is a nice little, little yeah, bump in, in, the, in the red white. races. Yeah. See scouring sands in hand for Jensen, but no real use for it. I wonder if wing sideboard sideboarded differently. I mean, we saw him with no one and no two. Yeah. I don't know how much wiggle room he had in the board to kind of beef up his creatures, but he might have gone to a little bit more of a normal, you know, mid-range-ish. Yeah, we may have also build. just seen the bot, you know, we may have just seen the segment of his deck that's the bottom part of his curve. And there's there's the god, there's Iroas. So Iroas got a victory. This one, guy's two, mean. three, four, five pips. He's got five. He's close. All right, now what Wing's doing is is the trick. Inspired is on the stack, and it's been targeted by the Afar's Warden, but he's going to actually fire off Titan Strength here to prevent that from happening. Right now, Huey is blockerless. But he's, he's at 18. Yes, he is at 18. But he's going to take 10. But Wing's got to be careful, right? I mean, if he goes a little too crazy here, he could take a big hit on the backswing, too. This is going to be one of those back and forth fights, I think. You? Yeah, you can't time just to leave, do some math, Wing. You can't just leave one creature back to block. And you can't block profitably no matter what you do. All right, five mana. Another supply wow. line cranes. It's like uh, wings on the same train I am. He's he like, these get you get in there for eleven. Right. Wow. That's seven from the butcher. Right. You know, two plus two for the inspired trigger, three for the titan strength, and then four from the cranes. That wow. crane, that other crane, cannot block. So, what does Jensen have here? Remember, Eroes not a creature currently. Right. Looks like he's holding Forgeborn Oriads, but I do not think he has his second mountain. I think you're right. That would do the trick here, too, at least getting Eroes active, putting down a blocker for the Kragma Butcher. 11. Right now, Wing cannot kill Huey in the air, at least as the board sits. He's one point short, doing six in the air instead of the requisite seven. 
And Huey maybe just needed a mountain here. I mean, yeah. he drops wing down to 14 if he wants to ping, ping wing. And then he gets to attack for 7, 8, 9, 10, up to 11 here. More likely he just attacks for 10, though, and uh, and puts wing in a horrible position where he needs a, a, a burn spell or a combat trick or something to get him. And it looks like he's going to scour his hands just to dig. thinking Huey's realized that he is not it's not getting any better and he has a uh, basically two dead cards in his hand he's got a uh, a planes and he's got the forgeborn oriads that yeah. he can't cast and what has he found him look how deep in the tank he is here wow this is going to be close i feel like wing is in a winning spot here Looking to take down Huey in his eighth top eight of the season. Huey attacks. The nope. Cranes can't block. He kept that on top, nope. didn't he? He did. I think he did. Yep. Taps the butcher. Now Wing tanks it out. This is interesting. I think he's only got one card left in his hand here. Is it a pump spell? If it is, he, just, he could just win here, assuming Huey has nothing. It is. God's willing. Well, it's, it's not, not a, pump a pump spell, spell, but it's protection from white. And it's lethal enough. So I think Wink's going to win right here. Okay. Huey stoic as ever. He's doing the math. Yeah, I mean, he's thinking about divine verdict he's like, here. What could happen here? I mean, his the, the butcher's going to have protection from uh, from white, so it can't be verdict verdicted. But he does need to get in with that and the biggest supply line cranes in order to win. Otherwise, it's just six again, and he could open himself up to be getting killed. And also, wing has to remember right. that. And, and he this was is the card wing's going to draw for the turn, right? So. Yep. This is all happening during his upkeep. Or during his untap. Or <laughs> now, I think what's going to happen is Wing is probably going to be forced to just go for it here, in which case he's going to win. But if he decides to get cute, yep. nope, he doesn't, and that's going to do it. Wing, Yam, he is going to advance. Our, our number one seed remains in control. Super aggressive deck and uh, even more aggressive than Huey's, and he takes him down. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's possible that Huey could have... Uh, with, with another mountain, could have gotten in there for just enough. It was going to be pretty close. Mm -hmm. it was, it would, he would have done it next turn. He gets to get one ping off of the uh, Oreads. Yeah, he can do a but ton it was, of damage. But it was really like old school looking Theros, red, white, heroic deck yeah. from Wing Chun Yam. We, had, we saw a Titan Strength and we saw God's Willing both doing, uh, you know, you know the, the God's work, the 